And now we're going to look at question 5, which is a three story wind frame. And this is a frame in which we're going to look at the sway from the wind and the design for bending moments as in a traditional wind frame type analysis which was used in recent years. The wind load is 6 kN, is given as a UDL to the side and the dead and live loads are given for the beams in, uh, in there separately. It's 5 meter spans and 2.5 meter story height timber floor with steel beams and we're given the beam size with the parameters the I value and the E value for steel the I value and the plastic modulus is, is introduced which is given in the problem and all this is covered in the book this follows through the exercises with the hints which include figure 2.2.3, chapter 2.5 and chapter 2.12 which may be found in the book. Question 5a and now all the beams are the same size and loading. Traditionally we would design the beams for the ultimate dead and live load condition assuming they're simply supported. So we take the total load which comes up at 9 kilonewtons a metre. Ultimate factor 1.5 gives you 13.5 kilonewtons per metre. And in figure 2.5.10 we can ignore any fixity at the support. So we calculate the moment WL squared over 8 which gives 42 kilonewton metres capacity to section is the plastic modulus times the yield stress it's 275 over 1000 times 393 which gives 108 kilonewton meters and this is greater than the applied bending moment of 42 which means that the beam is sufficient size question 5b And now we're going to look at the cumulative uh, wind loading which happens at the first floor F1 plus F2 plus F3 and we calculate the wind shears from the story heights at the top it's uh, half the story height, half the height. So the total comes up to 37.5 kilonewtons as a wind shear which acts at first floor. And we show how the bending moments, so we assume that the all the columns have the same bending moment, so it's 37.5 times H over 3 is per each case, gives you 31 kilonewton meters per column. It's 37.5 times 2.5 divided by 3. Question 5C. And now we're going to look at story drift, which is using an approximate calculation which may be found in the book. So each drift height is each drift deflection is, is given as those ratios based on the one at the, at the bottom. So the flex WL cubed over two EI with W W is the shear at one column. So we work out the shear 12.5 kilonewtons third of the total. The deflection putting in these figures gives 10.8 millimeters and we add those together in the constituent ratios and we come up with a deflection at the top of the building and the, th and the roof of the second story 19.8 millimeters. Question 5D and finally what we're going to do is we're going to take the beam and assuming it's simply supported work out its deflection of dead plus 10% live load so we, that's the total loading 5.4 kilonewtons per meter the deflection is given 5 WL to 4 over 384 EI and we fill in the figures for the beam and we get approximately 5 millimeters deflection so if you look in the dynamics chapter 2.12 
pages 133 to 134, you come out with a natural frequency of 8 hertz, which appears to be high enough. Just noting in the aside on the in in this chapter that if you have the combined joist and beam, the combined effect will, will work out to be less than the 8 hertz. So this may be a consideration which we'll have to look at in more detail. Thank you for listening. Thank you.